how to split a stereo track into two mono tracks and then work with it in GarageBand or Audacity. And here's what usually is the case. We use the H4N, the Zoom audio deck, which allows us to use the different inputs and it records it to stereo tracks. And you can see on the screen here, I have stereo tracks from the input, which is the bottom of the deck, and I have a stereo track from the stereo mic on the top of the deck. That's what it does when it records. Four different channels, all into two different files, both stereo. But we need to separate those out. So let's take a look at that. First, if you don't have Audacity, you can download it from audacityteam.org. Once you have Audacity, open it up, and I'm going to drag, uh, let's do the input one. So here are from the amps. And when the files come in here, I have two stereo channels. And if I hit play, it's going to have both the guitar and the bass playing simultaneously, but I want to separate these tracks out. So what I do is I go over here and I say split to stereo, uh, split stereo to mono. Now I have two separate tracks. And here's my simple thing. I just delete this one and I go to file, export audio, and this is going to be the guitar track, so I'm just going to name guitar, and I'll save it back into the folder where it was. It's going to automatically save it as a WAV file. I can pick the AIFF. Either one of these are going to be high quality, and again, either one's fine. I default to the WAV just because that's what the default is for Audacity. Now once that's done, I undo, delete this track, and now I have, wait, did I do the right one? Yes, I delete this track. So now this is the bass track, and I'm going to export this one out. And I'll just call this bass, and boom. And I click OK. And I have both those files isolated. Now, what I want to do is go over to GarageBand, since this is the dominant tool we're using. And I'll come over to the folder here, and I'm going to drag the bass and the guitar in here. And the most important thing is I need to make sure they're both lined up all the way to the left, because they both were synced up, both started at the exact same time. Uh, this track I don't need, so I'll just delete that track. But if I were to hit play, oh, let's turn off the metronome here. Let's go over here. Let's zoom in. Now, the nice thing is what I can do is I can pan these left and right, or I can adjust volume. I, I can Basically, the point is this. I can play with each track separately and modify the... the the volume, I can mess with the pitch, I could do whatever it is I want to do with each track, but they're separated out. And I can do this for as many decks or as many channels that I've recorded as, as, as possible, and I can drag these in. The only other thing is, if you have two decks going at once, let's take a look at that. I'm going to go back to Audacity, and I'm just going to delete this file, and I'm going to drag in the drums. Now, the way the files work is if I look closely here, there's an I at the name of the file at the end here, and that means input. That means that this was the, the two mics that went into the bottom of the deck. If I drag this in, one is kick and one is snare. And if I click here and I play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these again. So I'll go down here to split. And if I want to figure out which one's which, okay, that's the snare. And I'll mute this, and I'll, and that's the kick. So I'll do the same thing here: is I go like this, unmute this, I'll export it out, and I'm just going to call it kick. And I will save it back in the same folder. Click OK. I'll undo that, delete that, and I've got now. Did I save? <laughs> you know what? I don't trust what I'm saying. The thing I exported was the um, was the snare. Okay, now this is the kick. So I'll go over here and I go export audio, and this is the kick, and I'll save that in the file too. Boom. Okay, last thing, I'm done with Audacity. Now I have these two tracks, and I want to bring the kick and snare in here. And here's the issue: if I line all these up because the, the drums were recorded with a different audio deck, meaning both decks didn't start at the same time. And so what I'm looking for is some kind of lead-in, and I need to sync up these tracks, and I can do it both visually and with audio. You can see the drummer here did a click in. He, did a, uh, he was hitting his sticks, 
And there's also a click track. If I play the click track right here, you'll hear it. Okay. And that is what we want. It's right there. So I need to move this channel of these tracks right here. I'm going to cut them right around here. Command T. And I'll delete these out. And I'm going to drag these and visually line them up. And what I do is I'll take this right here and place it right in front of that click. And you can see I still need to get a little bit further. Um, that's pretty close. Now if I play this, what I like to do is I like to, um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Whoop, whoops. There we go. Whee. And I'm going to hit the loop feature on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see where the loop option is. And I put it right over this section. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now, they're off by just a smidge. Let's tighten this up a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm going to zoom in even more. And if you look closely, you can see that these tracks down here are not quite lined up right. Now, this white here and this white here means they're both selected. So when I drag one, they both move. That's important. I don't want to move them separately. I want them to keep them together. Because these two are synced up. These two are synced up. And I don't want to move any single track. I want to move two at a time. Now let's hear that click again. It sounds like it's one solid click. What that means is all four of these tracks now should be synced up. And I'll turn this off by clicking on it here, or I could click here. And I'm going to listen now. And I'll just jump in here. And now the drums, the bass, and guitar should all be synced up. And let's just jump into another section. Now I can go about editing the different levels, the volume of the kick and the snare separately, and so on. Now the last piece that I'm not going to show now, but you'll get the idea, is that on the audio deck for the drums, they also had a stereo channel, which ends with an M. That's for the cymbals that were over the top of the drum set. And if I were to drag that in, the stereo channel, all I have to do is line up that click right here, and then I'll have the cymbals in there. Hey, while I'm here, I might as well do it. So check this out. I'm just going to go down here, put the cursor there, Command-T. And because this white bar was here, that means this track was selected. I'll delete that out, and I'm just going to look to line this up again right here. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can see this really close. And you can see that I'm not even close. I'm going to bring this really close here. And that seems about right. And I use this right here to kind of line up to just see how close I am. I can go a little bit closer here. All right, that seems about right. Now let's hear what the drums sound like with the cymbals and here's the... We got the bass guitar starting off, but let's jump into the drums. Now what I can do is, these are the cymbals I can adjust the volume separately, and I can then work with the kick and the snare to get the drum sound exactly how I want it to be. And, yeah. And I continue working in GarageBand, uh, and essentially that's my summarization, how to use audio decks. You can use as many as you want. You have to do some kind of click in the beginning that'll help you line things up. And especially if the drummer does some kind of count off before we start, that it can visually, you can see that really clearly here that helps line up the tracks. So we isolated tracks in Audacity and exported those out as mono tracks so we could mess around in GarageBand. And then we imported them in and synced them up. That is the full process of using the recording decks, using Audacity, using GarageBand to have basically a portable recording studio with the audio decks anywhere you want and then bringing it back into the software to edit. Thanks for watching.